Hi everyone, Victoria Cochran here for another Spiritual Wisdom Hour, talking to you from rainy northwest Tasmania. Hope you're all well and good, and I'll just, I'm in a bit crooked, <laughs> waiting for a few people to jump on and say hi. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how we stay connected in uh, a very busy and dense vibration um, that we know of Earth. Hello, welcome to you. Hi, Kimmy, you're on. Fantastic. You've got me right at the beginning. Hi, Patrice. Lovely to see you. <clears throat> So I really got some great feedback last week and uh, a few people told me that what I was talking about resonated with them and uh, a few people got in touch as well. So that was really fantastic and uh, it's really great to get feedback because when I get feedback, um, whether it's good or bad, it just helps me to know uh, how people would like to be helped and what they would like to hear about. Hi Lisa, welcome back. Hi Margaret. Hi Paulette. You had me on speed dial. You're a darling. I hope you got some sleep last night, Kimmy, because uh, I saw you yesterday. You hadn't slept, so I hope you are feeling a bit better. It's great to see you all on. So I'm really loving bringing these lives to you every uh, week and uh, this is my third one so it's very exciting and uh, I, as I said I really love to get your feedback and your comments. So the idea, hi Susan, uh, the idea is to just talk to you about what I have come to know and un oh. Sorry, Kimmy. Oh dear, that's not good. I need to get onto some valerian or lavender oil or something. Uh, okay, Lisa, what's going on with mum? Mom, so are you over in um, America or somewhere? So I, what I might do is uh, write people's names down so I'll just do my bit of a spiel first and then I'll come back and I'll do 15-20 minutes of readings I've just lost focus for some reason sorry I've gone all okay fantastic I am morning Beverly great to see you um, for some reason I've gone all fuzzy oh there we go I'm back again um, right, excuse me while I die for pen and paper or something. And uh, Lisa wants to know about her mum. So I'll write that down and uh, I'll come back to it. Oh, great. Um, Okay, so I'll start my spiel because I tell you what, um, I need to talk first. So please keep your questions until I've just about finished, okay? Otherwise it's a bit distracting. Um, so I've got that down, Rebecca. <clears throat> okay, so I was in Launceston at the beginning of the week and I ran a little workshop for four people and one of the big questions was, how do we maintain our vibrations above the really dense uh, world that we live in? Chris, my son Chris is on. So great to have you on there, Chris. Welcome. Um, so, uh, and uh, some of us struggle with that more than others. Um, and there are a few uh, things that I do to help me do that and not always it's always a work in progress but I just want to talk to you about the dimensions of consciousness that we live in so everything is a consciousness and this is the cover of my uh, the first book that I channeled which was uh, after a meditation on the 12th of the 12th 2012 so we talk about 3D or the third dimension. Okay, Gabby, 
Thank you. I'll um, pop you down. Um, so part of the reason we struggle is because of the denseness of ego. <laughs> so the third dimension is a state of doing. It's a state of self-service, a state of people worrying about themselves, being stuck in the past, worrying about money, uh, worrying about other people's business, gossiping, drama, media is all down here. Donald Trump, all of that. Um, hey, Chris. Awesome. So great to see you. So um, this is third dimension. Okay. And the thoughts that we think third dimensionally would be, I hate that person. You know, I hope they go to hell. You know, even the language that we, the talk, that we talk, if it's a really dense thought or uh, feeling that you have about someone that's third dimension okay so it's about how they're affecting you and not being able to see their point of view and so uh, we we live and work in that every day don't we and if you work in a bank or a hospital or you know anywhere like that you've got the lowest of low with people really sick and stuck in their physical body so it's really not moving outside our physical awareness so then the fourth dimension is the state of becoming where we start to let more light in, where we start to see our, uh, how our behaviour affects other people, stop blaming other people and start taking responsibility for our part in everything. And it's still a lower, it's still, it's got lots of levels. So we talk about dimensions, but the levels in each dimension are, um, are varied okay so uh, we can have uh, a really low uh, level in, in the fourth dimension which is a state of becoming and a state of awareness but we can still kind of be quite dense in our thinking but the more that we rise to the fifth dimension and I'm going to talk about how we can do that then uh, the more uh, aware we are of our own behavior but we're also more tolerant of others um, open to the possibility that we're actually not separate this is separation this is what happens when we believe that we're not as good as each other and not as good as God God is also a consciousness to me God is the highest consciousness of oneness um, and unconditional love and so when I go to the uh, the theta state, that's the state of the highest consciousness. There's no people, there's not a man sitting on a throne. It's unconditional love and it's just this essence of beautiful white light that uh, is used for healing. So, um, you know, if you need to go to church, please do. Like, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people can get the creation, uh, get their, their um, connection to the creator within themselves but some people need help to do that and so the people in church also are very often very beautiful and very loving so it's that connection what do we need we all need connection and we all need to feel like we belong okay so our whole existence really is about feeling connected and about feeling that we belong and feeling that uh, we're making a difference to other people and our higher selves know the, the sole purpose that we've come in to do but along the way in the in the dense vibrations of that it's like wading through treacle isn't it and it's very easy to lose our way and to forget our connection to ourselves and uh, in spirit and uh, to our higher purpose so we move and live within the dimensions all at the same time and we can do that within a sentence uh, and every thought creates our reality so you know if you if you said oh gee I love the shoes you're wearing and and you look great and then as the person's back is turned you say oh she's a bitch well hello which dimensions have you suddenly gone down to and we we do that all the time but the more that we can actually cut and cancel um, that's fantastic Jade thank you for that feedback it's just wonderful to to receive the feedback that it's resonating with people um, the, the more that we can rise above that and remember that we all have our own journey everybody's on a journey of soul involvement and growth and when we think about 
uh, the energy of oneness, then nobody's any better or any worse than anybody else. Everybody is one and the same. Even the queen is actually not a better person. Um, we're all just one and the same. So we're all connected, which means that every thought goes out into the human collective consciousness and conglomerates into this big, massive, oscillating uh, vibration of negative and positive. And if you're an empath or your aura uh, and your energies are quite low, you can hook into that and it can just make you feel quite, uh, quite uh, dark in your thoughts. And that's where I think terrorism comes from. But that's another, that is another uh, matter for another day. So it's really, really important then to raise our vibrations above this and start to to uh, see things from a higher perspective than just our little bubble of the world. And when I talk about vibrations, I'm really talking about changing our perspective, changing our thinking and, and changing um, ourselves from a glass half empty person to a glass half full person. And that's all it is. We do, Rebecca, we write our script before we come to earth. We choose our, we sit in our soul family and we choose our lessons and we choose the people we're going to interact with. And it's really complicated too if we've got karma, then we, morning Deborah, uh, thank you. Um, I will pop you on the list. Um, so yes, we choose all, all of that. But then uh, sometimes we can lose our way. And if we don't learn our lessons, then we have to come back and, and learn them. So then we, we die early or we just leave the earth and then we come back and try again. And uh, I did actually uh, walk into a house one day and a man had been estranged and they hadn't seen. So it was um, my lovely friend Lisa's um, house and her brother had passed away and they hadn't seen him for 25 years. And... Uh, he just, his energy was all over me and I just started channeling him and uh, he had just lost his way and his words were, big fail, I'll do better next time. And uh, my friend said, oh yeah, but you want to do it with better parents because they had a bit of a rough upbringing. And he said, no, I'm really grateful that I, I had those lessons to learn because now I've learnt them and I will be able to use those lessons and come back. So I'm actually really grateful. So even though he had to come back, um, his message to his sister and who related to their mother was a really powerful one of actually, um, even though we were estranged, I'm actually really grateful and I love you and that there was that reconnection. So it's really a wonderful to be able to have that gift, but too wonderful that, uh, to know that that's how it works. We learn our lessons. So thank you, Kelly. Um, so once you've achieved mastery, and we talk about um, Saint Germain, who's lived lifetimes as Jesus, uh, not Jesus's father, Galil I think Galileo, Christopher Columbus. He's lived quite a few powerful lifetimes. He's come, why has he kept coming back? He didn't have to, but to help the world to rise uh, above all the dense uh, vibrations uh, that are going on. So, yes, it's really, really important, but it's really, really difficult because of the media, because of uh, people who don't want to change, people who are uh, still uh, stuck in their stuff and not willing to um, change. So uh, I'm just making a bit of a list of people who'd like a message at the end. And I do apologise if I don't get to you. But, um, and please, uh, after I've finished, I'm available, not today, but um, if you'd like to book in a little chat with me, then it, we can work out uh, how I might be able to help you with the healing and, and so on, because I help people to move out of their past uh Baggage, and that's what I was going to talk about next. Uh, was 
that there are ways for us to, and I'm actually inundated with people awakening at the moment who are starting to move into that upper fourth dimension and starting their psychicness is coming in. Everybody has the ability to be psychic. I'm proof of that. Uh, 12 years ago, I had no idea that I had all these gifts. That is the honest truth. So uh, that is why I love to help people step into their gifts. Um, and so the more there's a lot of people awakening and, and saying, well, how do I, what do I, what, 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 how do I do this? Um, so finding people like me, and there are lots of us, it's not just me, go to someone that you're really comfortable with. Um, so raising our vibrations to a higher consciousness, here's a bit of a list for you towards spiritual awakening and involvement depends upon. So you can't do it until you're aware of your thoughts and how negative, positive they are and start to change them. We create our reality with every thought we think. Thought creates form. Archangel Michael says that in his books and uh, channelings through Rona Herman, Rona V. Zane. Thoughts create form. What we think, we create. And we think based on our belief system. So that's where I love uh, theta healing, which is what I'm trained in, because it changes beliefs. But Louise hated it in a different way. There are body talk, There's a, there are a lot of modalities that work on changing our belief systems to help us to see things in a more positive light. Um, Jade, no problem. Um, so, hi Helen. Um, yes, you're awakening too. So many. It's fantastic. So the other thing is uh, how much baggage are you carrying? How much trauma? How much resentment? How much uh, weight is on your shoulders? Um, and uh, how much of it have you let go? And are you willing to let it go? Because the more you can do that... Hi, Tony. Um the more you can do that, the better. And I tell you, I've done a lot of it. My son would be able to tell you that I've still got more to do. But uh, he uh, he's done a lot of work on himself too. And the more work we do on ourselves, the more aware we become of ourselves. And when we react to people in a certain way or a situation, it's not blaming them. It's back, hey, Diane, great to see you. Um, no. Kimmy, yes, you're doing a lot of shifting. Um, the more we go introspectively, what is it in me that's causing me to react like that? What do I need to change? What what do I need to forgive in myself or for others? What is it in me? So the more that we can let go of the past, um, and sometimes that's really tricky because we can hold on to contracts and... Uh, uh, vows and commitments that we've brought in from other lifetimes and uh, that's a lot of the work I do because uh, a healer can look into that for you but I can tell the people who come to me who've already done a lot of work because it shifts really quickly. Rising out of ego, if I were an ego and uh, trying to tell you that I'm the only one you should come to and the only one to listen to. I wouldn't be helping anybody because you'd all be thinking that I'm a wanker. Sorry for the language, but you would. And you would just go now. And my vi vibration wouldn't be high enough to be able to help anybody, you know. Um, so I've moved through that. I've been through the ego journey. But um, ego only keeps you serving self and that's just not current that's not a really good vibration for people to be drawn to you um so that you know for people to be drawn to me so that i can help them and i just say to creator please send me the people that need to see me but if i'm sitting in a psychic fair or a, or anything like that and they go and see other people i know that i'm not the right person for them and that's fine uh, stay away from gossip, stay away from people who drag you down and be prepared for people to drop away as your vibrations rise because you'll start to actually not... Uh... Oh yeah, you've got to keep yourself clear too, Tony, but uh, as you start to rise and do start to keep clear, the masters that are working with you can bring more light in and then you start to think from a higher vibration and then all of a sudden you can't tolerate the gossip that's going on. You like the person still and you can understand 
their journey and love them for them, but you're not going to engage in their stuff. It's about being an observer and loving the person still, not actually deciding that you can't stand them, but it's just about tolerating them but not engaging and moving away from them to protect your energy if you need to. Uh, being grateful for what you have instead of ruining what you don't have, so important. I'm grateful every day for the gifts that I have and for the abundance I have. I, I live in a little shack, Chris will tell you, it's not nothing fancy, but it's down by the water and it's beautiful. And I have a beautiful husband who still love, we're still in love, three beautiful boys. We have everything we need and uh, we can still afford to go away on trips and things. And I've just retired. I have, I'm so grateful. I've got a lawn set and I've got people who love me and who let me stay there and look after me. How grateful am I for that? Have people who come and ask me for help and I have the gifts to help them. I'm so grateful. And the more that I'm grateful, the more everything comes in. So even if you feel you have nothing, find one thing at least to be grateful for every day and just start to turn yourself around from I can't, I, it won't, I'll never, to I can, I will, I am, I have. It's so powerful. You have no idea how, how wonderful it is. Um, and be careful about working in the spirit world. Shamanism, uh, even tarot cards and pendulums and all those tools. If you don't know who you're talking to, it could be anybody. And it's a bit like... Uh, you know, getting half truths and and uh, um, so lower vibrations. So if, you know, if uh, the the spirit world generally is a lower vibration than the angelic realm, and the angelic realm is a lower vibration than creator's light. So you've got to make sure that you're actually knowing who you're talking to. Much prefer you to be working with a master than an angel than calling in great aunt Betty or your totem guide, or the wind and the sun. Don't go there because you are immediately uh, bound to nasty vows and commitments like I need to trade my energy, I need to die a little death. It relates to a sacrifice of energy. And so if you're working with people or you're a healer and you're always exhausted and you're taking on other people's energy, it's because you're working in the fourth plane and even the upper fifth plane, the angelic realm, uh, has some nasty trading. We we emit energy, we absorb energy, and all our interactions work on some kind of a trading of energy. And the only way that you can uh, stop that from happening is just connecting to the unconditional love of the Creator, to the All. If you don't really believe in God, just connect to the All, to the Universe, and just hold the intention that you're working in the energy of unconditional love and then you won't trade energies with people. Really, really important. Diane, that I know very well, says, giving gratitude every day changes the whole way you see things. Absolutely. And Kimmy says, I'm so grateful that I get to come to you and do the workshops. And it's so wonderful to do this work and meet beautiful people like you, Kimmy. Um, oh, look, the people who drop away were good at the time. And you learn from each other, but as the vibrations rise, you know, they serve their purpose. So it's it's that it's that um, people come in for a reason or a season, that kind of thing. And even if it was really devastating and you've just had a terrible time with that person, always come back. The easiest thing to do is come back to what was the lesson for me? What have I learned about myself and what can I be proud of myself for? That's really taught me about myself that I will never let anybody treat me like that again. Then you know your lessons learned and you don't have to go through that again. So see the blessing in every in every uh, adversity um, and then that makes things easier as well. So change your thinking, change your perspective and change your life pretty much. We create our own reality. So how do I... Uh, maintain my link to the spiritual world and just kind of drop in and connect and and but still manage to have a wine and not be affected by it or drop the f word occasionally or you know just interact with 
lower um, energy people and still be okay. I'm not always okay. I'm not. I do get angry. I do, you know, sometimes I drop the ball. But I'm really, really aware of it. And I'll bring up the violet flame straight away. I'll connect straight away. I'll bring in Archangel Michael and ask him to clear me. I'll work on it straight away. So I won't let it just simmer and fester. I'll actually get help. And if I can't do it, I'll go to it. I'll go to a healer myself. Because actually, you might be surprised to know that healers, uh, well, I, I as a healer find it really difficult to clear myself or more difficult to clear myself. I can, but quite often I, you know, I just, I have hidden agendas or I, I just don't see things clearly, whereas I'll see things crystal clear for other people. So I'll, awareness is the key. So being aware of it and getting on top of it rather than drag, letting yourself get dragged down. And um, I'm getting much better at that. And uh, I'm not getting sick nearly as much as I used to and so uh, because if you let your vibrations get low that's where your aura gets holes in it you pick up every bug and you get really dragged down so uh, yeah so very important um, I embrace my spirituality my connection and uh, my gifts my beliefs as a knowingness and it's my truth and I stand in my truth and I don't judge myself for it anymore. And that way nobody judges me and I just tell people, but I don't feel that I need to spout it out. I kind of trust that uh, whoever comes to me uh, or needs to come to me will find me. Um, people don't need to know um, every minute of every day about uh, my spiritual connection or beliefs or anything I'm just kind of me and a lot of people will be absolutely shocked when they've known me for three years and suddenly they find out what I do um, but it's a, it's part of me you know it's actually it is who I am so it's always there so I'm I trust that I'm always connected that it's always there and it's not this kind of other second me that I just kind of can bring in sometimes it's always there so um, that's that's uh, a part of the lesson too is trusting that uh, that it's there and that uh, I don't need to prove myself to anyone and I don't need to prove myself to myself you know I know who I'm talking to so I'm always oh, I'm always connecting to create it now as an advanced theta healer that's what I've been trained to do but I teach everybody to do that um, there's no uh, patent on connecting to unconditional love and so th that's the only way that I can really keep myself protected but I um, Archangel Michael came in um, and is my guide so I'm just aware that he's with me all the time so he's my witness so it's like I walk through each day with Archangel Michael as my witness and he's seeing everything I do and so it makes me more aware of being in integrity and and of um, the way I think and um, I'll always uh, be much more careful with my thoughts and things so I've, I've just always got that connection um, even if I'm watching TV or chatting with friends or whatever I'm doing so it's uh it's that's it's just a part of me um and create and Archangel Michael that's part of his real uh teaching is about being totally aware of yourself connected to spirit all the time um and uh just using it as a witness no problem, Kelly. Have a beautiful day. Um, I keep my aura zipped up as much as I can as soon as I hit the floor. And I, I'm grateful, uh, say thank you for this beautiful day. Um, I, I do actually have to confess I go straight for the coffee machine. Um, but uh, I, uh, and I don't necessarily sit in, in meditation every day, but I'm always connecting. So I'll ground, connect. Um, every time I'm working with someone, I'll connect and I'll wash my aura off and I'll ask for healing for the person's highest and best. Um, how do you know who are your guides? Margaret, I can look for you. 
but uh, you can you'll start to see colors and feathers and um, um, the more aware you get they um, but I actually didn't meet Archangel Michael till I did a course and uh, the person or the, the spirit well my grandfather came in smelling of cigarette smoke and giving me headaches and he actually taught me how to channel and that's another story but um, I did a course and was introduced to Archangel Michael that way. Um, thank you, Cody. So also, I break my energy from people. So whatever you, uh, some, some of you might have tried and true and tested ways of breaking energies, but particularly if you're working with clients and things, always breaking your energy. Um, so I do the kahuna break, that's what I was taught. Rubbing my energy, zipping up and sweeping it out of my aura and getting rid of it. Um, and I have the four archangels of directions in my space. So that's Archangel Michael, Uriel, Gabriel and Raphael. And they're always stationed in my space, particularly when I'm in a psychic fair or a body and soul festival or something. I keep my space very clear and I bring them in and I clear the energy. I use frankincense and essential oils. I'm a young living fanatic, much to my son's disgust. And, um, and uh, sorry, Chris, and uh, uh, sometimes crystals, but not very often. I just keep myself connected all the time. I send love and the violet flame to the world um, often and with intent it is. So if I just picture it, I'm sending it. So I'm sending love and light. If an ambulance goes past, I'll just say blessings, Archangel Michael, and he knows that he offers help um, if the person's higher self will accept it. Um, the more we can send the violet flame, Archangel Zadkiel and Saint Germain are the keepers of the violet flame and it transmutes uh, negative energy to positive. So I've used it on uh, my family sometimes if they're particularly grumpy. Um, yes, this is a really great question. How are we supposed to function amongst people who subscribe to system, politics and dogma anywhere in life? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this, Monica, it's really, really... Uh, oh, it's, uh, yes, no, that's right, it's better to, um, it's better to judge, uh, uh, to remove yourself from that situation if it's really making you sick. Um, and some people will never change, and it's the way that we've been brought up. Uh, we've gone through lifetimes of indoctrination, of persecution through religion and, and other means. Uh, some of us have kind of genetic links to traditions and belief systems through our families rather than actual illness or physical things. So a lot of it is um, ingrained and believe what you know what we believe we create. Beliefs are incredibly difficult to change unless we can see the benefits of it for ourselves. And so all you can do is work on yourself, Monica. That's it. The saviour of the world, here's my my sentence of wisdom for the day. The saviour of the world is for everybody to work on themselves and to uh, bring themselves to a point of loving themselves unconditionally enough to remove themselves from situations or people that bring them down uh, without judgment without um, feeling that they need to give them peace of mind or anything you just work on yourself raise your vibrations and uh, just send love and if it's really toxic get out of it just you know and then thank the universe for uh, protecting you from lower uh, energies. Thank the universe for helping you to uh, find work where you will fit in and feel comfortable. And you're welcome, Diane. And uh, make sure that you are just um, seeing that everything comes to an end when it's meant to. And if you're getting these uh, toxic people in your life, and it's making you sick, then you need to move on. And, um, you know, if ever you'd like to talk to me more about that, Monica, I'd be happy to help you. But it kind of happened to me last year. 
And I was, I'd always said that I was going to be retiring from teaching and moving on and then I was a bit wishy-washy about it all and then a few things happened and I felt undervalued and it was just like, I'm going to do it. And it's just been the best thing I ever did. So it's taking that leap of faith to know that the universe is pushing you in the right direction. Um, yeah, so really just hold the faith and keep asking for help and... Um, Bring in the people that lift you up and surround yourself and do things that make your heart sing and meditate and connect to your guides and uh, and don't take on other people's stuff. That's the worst thing you can do. Okay, now um, I will start to tune in unless there are any more questions about that and a lot of people are, are telling me that... Um, that is uh, really helpful for them and they definitely resonate uh, with it. Um, but I, I can tell you that when I, uh, a few years ago, I mean, it took me a long time to, uh, once I discovered that I was pretty good at this and I loved helping people and this was just so what I was meant to be doing. Um, but... Uh, worried about what my Christian friends might say or worried about what others might think of me and so in doing that I was judging myself as well and so as long as I did that I wasn't accepting myself and uh, and we're mirrors for each other so therefore uh, other people started judging me and uh, but now I just uh, I'm totally in it and totally this is me um, but it's just a change of uh, confidence and total trust in my connection and total love for what I do but not in ego for helping to serve but without needing to sacrifice my energy so Joanne I'll pop you on the list darling so I can um, see if I can just look into why that might be um, that's lovely Margaret thank you so all we can do is work on ourselves. We can't change other people's opinions. You know, um, if uh, people don't dig what I do, that's fine. You know, blessings to them. Um, I send them love and um, uh, one day they, they might and that'll be great. Um, actually, my husband is not really, uh, he's not, certainly not a, big spiritual person like I am but he totally supports me and he totally sees how I help people and how I love it and he's a hundred percent behind me and so we just kind of live in this beautiful state of accepting each other's beliefs and um, not sweating the small stuff really and uh, all my family now um, you know mum will say have you been doing your magic today dear and it used to make me angry and now I say yes mum I have and she says oh that's lovely no problem and they love it too so you know it's the more that you stand in your power speak your truth but uh, accepting that other people may or may not and and accepting other people's truth it's okay even if it's not your truth that's their journey you know that's okay all right he is a keeper Beverly he absolutely is a keeper no no and although uh, the lady I stay, the, the family I stay with in Launceston, uh, the husband reminds me very much of uh, Mitchie, so accepting and just beautiful. And yes, yeah, so they are out there. And I've got to say, my three sons are the same. They're beautiful as well. Chris has popped off for a minute, so that's good. He didn't hear me say that. Um, okay, let me tune in. So I'm going back to Lisa, <coughs> who said her mum's in hospital, she's in America. I'm just going to have a drink of water. Oh, and Richie and I are coming up for 35 years on April the 28th, and I'll be in Launceston at the Body and Soul Festival. So you, if you're a Tasmanian, pop over, and I've got some free tickets, Diane. So if you'd like some, just pop around, and I'll give you give you some. Um, yes, I might get some cards out too, actually. Um, I've actually got these beautiful cards that I got from a friend the other day in exchange for clearing the energy in her house, which I thought was a really nice exchange. So I'll, I'll bring these out too. Healers are simply amazing. Um, 
yeah it's i love being a healer and i will do readings for people but i if things come up that need healing i just can't leave the person in that state i need to just ask permission for doing a healing as well okay lisa i'm just going to tune in on you and um, ask about your mum so i'll just clear my energy i've got the archangels in my space i'm grounding my energy connecting to the creator and asking for an unconditional love reading for Lisa <clears throat> and bringing my energy over, over her. So I am clairvoyant and I have the ability to remote view my energy over the person, which, and I wish I could teach that, but I don't know how I do it. So but when you just do something, it's really difficult to actually teach the person how to do that, okay? Um, but anyway, that's how I do it. But it's like projecting out of your third eye and... <clears throat> So Lisa's in America, and that because I'm the channel, um, that's how I can read for anybody across the world or send healing because I witness the healing. I don't actually do it. I just witness it. Yeah. Well, Lisa, I'm showing her heart space, and I'm not sure if she's having heart trouble, but... To me, it's held energetically. She's had, uh, so what we hold in our bodies, in our emotional body, in our uh, mental body, in our spiritual body, that it may have, we may have brought it in from lifetimes, but any trauma, any abuse, any anything, any heartbreak, anything emotional like that can actually have an effect on the physical body. Um, so... Uh, I'm more seeing her heart space and her feeling lost and uh, like in a void. So there's a lot of emotional stuff there, I would say. They might find a physical cause, but you know, I feel that your mum's got some um, disconnection, feeling disconnected from um, either source or from family or um, whatever. So... Yeah, perhaps she might need some counselling or some some kind of uh, reassurance or healing, but that's what I'm seeing. So I'm, I'm hoping that's helpful. Okay, so Rebecca, you asked, and I'll, I'll just, uh, Lisa, I'll just choose a card, a chakra card for your mum. <clears throat> So this is base chakra. So that kind of um, confirms to me that she's feeling lost and disconnected because the base chakra is about feeling connected and grounded in her own power and in her own sense of self. And she's feeling, if you look at the... Uh, oh, no, sorry, Monica, I, I will get to you. I do apologise. Um, she needs to find a, reconnect to her purpose and to... Um, feeling uh, a bit more useful perhaps she's feel not feeling that she's really um, fulfilling a purpose or that she's a burden or whatever it is so you can see I, I use the imagery too so I hope that does help you Lisa um, okay I'm just going to scroll up to way way back to uh, Rebecca, who asked about her son, and I'm not too sure how old her son is, because I haven't um, tuned in. Uh, anyway, I'll do that. Is my son going to be okay? Breaking my energy, making sure that I'm clear. I do think he will. It's on a bit of a journey. Um, just grabbing some different cards. I am here. <laughs> it's 
going some different cards. He's 12. Thank you. I did see him as a young boy, as a boy, teenage, nearly teenager. Um, has he been unwell? Because he looks really kind of um, quite dark through his chakras. His energy looks very, very blocked. So I am wondering if he's feeling a bit depressed or he's got some kind of illness because uh, and do you know I, I just think he's a really old soul and quite sensitive to energies and um, uh, what other people say and do he's a little earth healer so getting some spiritual healing for him would be a really good idea um, once he's clear and he's uh, protected and feeling secure he will be feeling much um, much better he'll be okay uh, he's got a big spiritual presence behind him Rebecca so um, he is protected but this is um, look for everybody to know that all the like I would say 99.999% of children born now uh, um, and in the last 20 years or so, uh, little masters coming in to save the world. And they're very, very uh, sensitive to lower energies, uh, to chemicals, to lower order foods, anything like that. And uh, particularly sensitive to bullying, very connected to Mother Earth, very, uh, very, uh, they're earth healers. So... They take on other energies uh, mental yeah that's what I could see I could see it I do want do wonder if that was depression because it's very very dark so uh, I will actually I would love to send uh, some healing if you would like to you know chat to me but perhaps we can book in for half an hour and if he gives permission I could send some healing or take him to get some Reiki somewhere um, take him to a naturopath anything like that that can look holistically not just the physical body okay yeah okay um, okay so he's needing love and compassion and that is his heart right so Rebecca, he just needs uh, help and protection from the, the denseness of the world. And what I've been talking about today is perfect. It's a perfect example of how higher energies and low, and uh, old souls can get caught up and really dragged down very easily by the denseness of living on Earth. And it's a tough gig. And that's why some um, masters... Uh, prefer to stay in spirit because they can help the world better that way because they won't get dragged down into all the emotion stuff you are welcome he will be all right I'm sending Archangel Raphael to him now Rebecca so that um, he can get the healing now while I've got Asra there I know she skipped the queue a bit but please draw a card for my teenager 15 whose anxiety due to bullies probably pretty much the same Yes, Paulette, probably much the same um, scenario for your uh, for your teenager, um, but um, so as I'll just tune in very quickly. <clears throat> it's good. It's still got fifteen. Feeling um, is it a he? I'm feeling very, very um, disconnected. Like uh, feeling kind of doesn't fit in because uh, being uh, really bullied and everything. So hello. Uh, yeah, just stay really vigilant and um, really uh, 
get some help for your teenager around resilience, but also around uh, self-worth and self-love, really um, about loving themselves enough to know that what other people say um, does not define who they are. So it's the, we, the, the more that we love ourselves and are um, happy in our own skin and, um, you know, uh, not worried about other, what other people think of us, the better. And that's, that's where you need to go um, with your teenager. And, of course, it's very, very hard. Um, peer pressure is a killer, you know. Um, daughter. Oh, it is a daughter. I did, yeah, I was... I was not sure with what I was seeing, but you know, um, anyway, she she really needs to know that she's enough and what other people say. Um, and she's at that age where you really need to protect her now so that she doesn't take it on, um, you know, keep her clear, maybe go to yoga. Toning is really good. Reiki is a really great one. So anything like that. Okay, uh, Gabby. Yeah, Monica says, Rebecca, also check out if there's a spiritualist church in the area that they have healing sessions. Great advice. Thank you, Monica. Um, so I can't remember what Gabby asked for, but she's on the list. So uh, anyway, I'll tune in to you, Gabby, and I think it's way back there. Anyway. You're going through a lot of changes. Uh, Gabby says she's struggling. That's right. Uh, that's good, Ezra. Thank you. Yeah, I can see that you're going through a lot of changes and your masculine side, uh, your right hand side is more weighed down with um, feeling disempowered and feeling disconnected. Um, some meditation would be really great for you uh, if you can uh, find a meditation group, if you can uh, also a spiritualist church like Monica says or uh, even yoga, somewhere where you can get back to just bringing yourself back in. And, you know, um, if you can just every day just uh, take a breath and ground your energy down and bring your energy back up and just bring in, uh, connect to source and just consciously bring that light over and then just sit in your heart space and just... Hold the intention, because we don't have to ask, we're co-creators, hold the intention that your energies that have uh, been fractured come back to you. Um, ask your Archangel Guides for help. Um, we'll see who's with you, Gabby. Mm. Uh, you've got Jesus there helping you to uh, step into love, because when we're in fear or... Uh, uh, depression or anything it's really hard to feel love for ourselves or feel the love from others that's trying to permeate the kind of cloud around us uh, but you also have Archangel Gabriel so um, call on them you need to ask you need to give permission not even God can help us unless we give permission so uh, Archangel Gabriel but Jesus is our, our bridge to uh, the light of the creator so cried on his shoulder many a time I tell you so yeah drop the fear because uh, just trust learning to trust and just knowing that it's all happening the old has to go away the new can't come in until the old has gone so um, yeah just quiet contemplation that's why I think meditation would be good but a guided meditation might be good to start with or going to a group um, yeah, you'll be fine. And look, 
um, book a chat with me. Let's just have a chat and then we can talk about how I can help you down the track and um, happy to give a bit of a discount for people who book in through here. So just, uh, just yeah, book a chat, a free chat. Um, you can do that through Sarah, through Spiritual Events Directory or just message me after, okay? Yeah, so going back to Deborah. Um, I'm just trying to work through my list as quickly as I can and uh, thanking everyone for their patience. Um, but I might do a card for Deborah actually. <clears throat> Tuning into Deborah. And just focusing on Deborah while I shuffle and asking for a card um, for her highest and best uh, for today. Ooh. So Deborah, coming into your life purpose. Okay, now I got this card out the other day for somebody and you can see that when we're coming to our life purpose, it doesn't just kind of suddenly manifest and there we are and we're doing it. It it's uh, a, a journey for sure and we're dropping things and we're shedding and we're uh, healing and all that kind of thing as we're stepping towards and we're clarifying and all of that kind of thing um, until we get there and I've really only stepped into this fully this year after 11 years so I mean I was doing bits of it but this is now where I'm fully embodying it but it's it's been a journey so be patient divine timing is the most frustrating timing of all and um, it's not always in the timing that we would like but it is a process and trust if I could give you the word of the week of the year of the decade of your life it would be trust Trust that you are being shown. The signs that are coming to you, the difficulties that you're facing are all signs for reflection, for um, uh, stopping and just really thinking about what is it that you're being shown, what lessons are you learning, what makes your heart sing, all of those kinds of things. But this is definitely happening for you, Deborah. Okay. Paulette. <coughs> Gosh, you have a lot of light around your um, shoulders. So you're definitely, uh, you must have been uh, awakening for a while. You've got quite a lot of emotion on your right side. So whether you're going through a bit of a relationship thingy or not, um, it's more a, a, a relationship readjustment or some kind of thing to do with how you uh, value yourself in relationships and starting to uh, to change your expectations around uh, what's expected in a relationship and expecting that um, change of energy and that's um, actually because I can see it's yellow and it's clear that perhaps you're working through that together so that's uh, that's a really nice thing and uh, Your left side is clear, but perhaps just stepping into your divine feminine is where you need to go next, is to really step into your uh, truth as uh, a goddess, as my friend Mikkel would say, and, and actually uh, really stand in your truth uh, and not expect, uh, and not uh, 
allow people to expect you to, to um, adjust to them or to please them. It's It's got to be a two-way street. So um, that is where you're heading and I encourage you to, to hold your ground and stand your ground in that. So that's the Paulette and this is also rebirth. So that's exactly what I'm talking about is actually starting to redefine the boundaries and really come into your own and, and uh, start to see yourself as valuable um, as other people and just as important and not to, um, you know, uh, pander to people's rubbish. Yeah, so that's for Paulette. Okay, Jade, coming to you now. Um, and then I'll get to Monica's uh, question, I think. I'll just have a, a bit of a look at Monica. Um, I, it's one o'clock now. If people don't mind, I'll just go for five or ten more minutes um if you need to go that's fine thank you for being here um okay jade jade i think you are connected to the elemental kingdom and very very uh, connected to nature very fun loving and a f bit of a free spirit um, I find it very difficult to remain grounded amongst uh, all the um, density of other people's emotions and also uh, what's going on in the earth uh, at the moment. So uh, look, just stay in your own truth and know that we can only do what we can do and that uh, the little bit that we do makes a real difference even if we don't think it does. So uh, thank you Beverly. Um, so make sure that you don't get uh, dragged down. Um, send love to the earth. Use the violet flame. It means more than you could know. And, uh, and uh, just uh, stay as beautiful as you are because I feel that your love transcends, uh, you know, the smile on your face or the kind words that you have for people actually it makes a huge difference for the earth so um jade please stay in your truth and don't get dragged down by others uh, because we need people like you um and look at that i just that's for jade oh my goodness that is so beautiful just play just be fun and uh know that the world needs you and what you're just do what you're doing okay and Helen uh, Tracy I will get to you I promise uh, oh, well I hope I hope that I can maintain that oh I was just going to get to Monica because Monica's struggling a bit um, here we go <clears throat> Monica, you need a bit of a clearing. I'm just going to ask Archangel Michael to give you a clearing. Um, in your aura, you've got some attachments there. Um, they can come in pretty easily when we're a bit low. Um, but your chakras look amazing. And so I just uh, really encourage you to keep working and to not worry about, um, you know, what's going on in the world because that's dragging you down. Um, so if I were to choose a card for you, it would be just nurture yourself and just uh, what happens in your part of the world and with the people that you're interacting with, the more you nurture and love yourself, the more it ripples out to the people around you and to the world. And we can't control you know just just work on what you can control don't sweat what you can't control because it's just dragging you down 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 so please monica just uh keep yourself as clear as you can meditate connect ground um and 
don't watch the news. Turf it out. Um, you know, just don't go there. Okay, it really is affecting you badly. Now, Helen. Helen, you've got a heart as big as China. Honestly, um, But you, you are a giver and um, a nurturer, but you do uh, worry a lot about other people and you need to just take back some power and just do stuff for yourself. Um, someone says, I'm so glad I just, Jade, randomly stumbled on this life post. Oh, everything happens for a reason. Um, that's fantastic. Yes, keep them up, Monica, absolutely. Um, so, Helen, uh, if I were to choose one for you, it would be to start to get back a little bit um, and not just keep giving out and uh, take some time for you. Um, Tony, sorry. Yep, okay. So, yeah, and... To, it, this says clarity, Helen, but it's also about prioritising because look at all those crystals in there. You've got a lot on the go. So just just, uh, just do what you can, but always put yourself first. Don't feel selfish about that. Tony. <clears throat> And some cards fell off, so, um, wow, so Tony, this is crown chakra, actually no, it's, uh, it's brow chakra, so you are actually developing psychically, um, and, and Julie, okay, um, so, don't be afraid and just trust, but uh, Lord Melchizedek is with you. Lord Melchizedek is a higher form of Jesus, it kind of goes Buddha, Jesus, Lord Melchizedek, creator, um, helping with spiritual understanding and uh, bringing in the extra light. Uh, so uh, please uh, call on him to help you. And uh, if you need some guidance, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, there's a few people I didn't get to. Julie said she's really struggling. I'll finish with Julie. I'll be back next week. Um, not sure what I'll be talking about, but uh, it might be auras and protecting our auras and, and things. But I'll just kind of go with uh, what people are bringing through. I also want to kind of talk more about what happens when we die and, and connecting to spirits. So um, for Carla, I will help you with that next week. So don't forget to tune in. Um, so Julie. Julie, you look like you've got a lot of heavy energy on you. Um, it's really quite dark on your right side. You're really feeling disempowered, quite lost, and perhaps quite depressed. Um, it seems like it's past stuff that needs lifting. Um, bringing up the violet flame for you so while i'm saying my goodbyes i'm holding it up for you please anything that's um really bothering you can you just put it straight i'm sorry joanne yes i'll come back to you um put
put it straight into there please uh, while I'm holding that up and just clearing that away for you but uh, you might need some help just um, uh, yeah, get some Reiki if you can Julie that would really help right Joanne sorry and there was Margaret too um, oh and uh, yeah that's my advice get some Reiki and uh, maybe also, if you need to go on antidepressants for a little while, Julie, do it. You know, just get yourself out of that hole. When you can see things more clearly, just just do that. Okay, Joanne. Choosing a card for you too, Joanne. Throat chakra. Are you feeling not heard or just, Joanne, not to... Uh, being able to speak your truth or it's starting to open and sometimes you just kind of go there and say too much. Um, you need a bit of a balance in um, how you speak your truth and no, don't worry, Leanne, tune in and watch it when it's uh, finished. Yes, yeah, so Joanne, just uh, get a balance in um, how you do speak your truth and just asking for clarity on information before you kind of uh, tell people what you think it's very open um, let me just yeah and if you are kind of saying a lot um, yeah maybe just uh, start to ask for, to bring in forgiveness and to be shown how you can forgive things so that and to actually be able to temper what you say with love so that you still speak your truth like goodness we need to say what we need to say but there's ways of saying it and um yeah and just knowing that everybody has their side and uh forgiving uh yourself as well as others yes beverly yes that's what pa did really he came in and uh and uh guided me to get messages from him and then uh, guided me to a course where i would learn to step into my gifts so Definitely they do. And uh, that was um, that was the way he could, uh, yes, they could definitely do that. And that was the way that uh, if they do that, that's a way of evolving spiritually too, of helping others to evolve spiritually. So, yes, it can definitely happen. And the last one is uh, Margaret. <coughs> Margaret, I'm again seeing your throat chakra, but it's really blocked. And I'm seeing it as red. So it's to do with your base chakra. So often they're very linked of standing in our truth, speaking our truth. So you're feeling very blocked because people don't believe in you or they don't believe what you're saying or you don't believe what you're saying. So if you don't have belief in yourself, then no one else can. So really working on... Um, clearing those blocks of loving yourself and accepting yourself for who you are and really working out um, what it is you uh, have learned and what your belief uh, belief systems are. So if you have joined too late, never mind, go back and watch this and I'll be back next Wednesday at 12 o'clock and thank you uh, so much for joining me. If you would like to book a, a free chat, you can contact Sarah or you can, uh, yeah, contact Sarah. She'll let me know and um, I'll contact you then and we'll book a chat and then if you would like a session, we can go from there. Lots of love and light and blessings to you all. Bye-bye.